So, Corey, what's your April Fool's? It's not an April Fool's. It's dead serious. I'm oh. taking a vow of silence, and I will no longer be joking on the podcast. Mm, <laughs> yeah. So that is a joke right there. You that, still the whole joke. thing is a joke. Get what it? are you, a lawyer? Yep. What? Is... <laughs> Man, we have a full house tonight. I think tonight you're... Today. Don't question my vow of silence. I will stop talking eventually. I doubt it. <laughs> Everyone stops talking eventually. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, another oh. lawyer in the house. What is with all these lawyers? <laughs> the, the world's oldest profession, right? Oh, wait, no. <laughs> dying? Damn it, another joke. The world's oldest profession I'm sorry. is dying. Though. How about we have a joke jar and I have to pay like some Bitcoin every time there's a joke? A whole Bitcoin. A whole Bitcoin. A whole, a whole Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Yeah. I said some Bitcoin. Some Bitcoin. 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 Point zero, 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 zero. All right. Read that oh. back. Ryan, are you the stenographer? Can you read that back? <laughs> I heard some Bitcoin, meaning and multiple Bitcoins. The jury of oh, no. <laughs> Plural <laughs> Bitcoin. Permission to treat the ho co host as hostile. <laughs> Let's go to chat needed. for it. Chat, what's the verdict? Mm. Corey can't Corey can't afford afford the big one. That is actually the verdict. That is correct. I cannot afford to pay multiple bitcoins every time I issue a joke, so that would be effectively keeping me from joking. Mm. Yeah, that would have to be really good jokes. Enough to be a comedian. I'm All right. reading the article show, real quick. Everybody. Yeah, I I have no idea what happened. Did anything bad happen? There's a bunch there's a there's a really cool worm that has a that has a really cool name. I Just, like it. I heard something about the alphabet. I don't know yeah. what that was about. Did, <laughs> no, my last my, my, letters my dropping again. What's the X Y Z no. thing? What 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 happened? With uh, that? Examine your zipper. <laughs> the zipper company got hacked again. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> are you serious? Did no. they get hacked from the supply they chain? They couldn't zip, zip up their own security. Be careful with your Rekka oh, hoodies. God. It uses the hacked zipper. Supply uh, chain yeah. attacks are everywhere <laughs> these days. Oh man! Uh, was it was uh, it a back door in the zipper? Are we doing? Yes. Are we doing a full recall on those now? If you <laughs> zip it up backwards, it does not work. So. <laughs> oh. Or did you guys already talk about that one? I don't know. No, we didn't. We didn't. Okay. no, we haven't. They got no, hit probably. again. No, no, no. no. They, 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 they kind of joked no. off the fact that I didn't okay. use the wrong. You know. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> Ralph's bringing up six-month-old news on here, and <laughs> no, no, he's, it's he's like the cooking show the where thing. they cut to previous footage. Uh, <laughs> you'd never do yeah. that. Keep going. Okay. All right. Go well, for it. Are we, uh, are we rolling, rolling it? the finger? No. You said you no. said okay so authoritatively, right? <laughs> yeah, I like that. This was April <laughs> Fools. There's really no April news fools. today. Hold on. This is it. Don't we'll see you guys later. Maybe do a countdown. Let's think about All it. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Welcome Hello, to... I'm Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ralph. Welcome you, to you, Black Space Information. You, you're talking about the news. Come on, you ruined it, man. This was my only chance. <laughs> you, okay, you just move your lips and I'll say the words. <laughs> okay, right. okay. Hello and welcome to Black Hills Information Security talking about Florida. It's April 1st, 2024, and we're going to talk about MFA Florida and no bandwidth. My favorite band. I love Bo's beard, and I wish I could go to sleep in it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we should have practiced, but I think it's great. Wow. <laughs> oh, boy. Corey's on fire. <laughs> Let's talk about Darkula. Is that what it's called? Darkula? Yeah, that's what it's called. Uh, is it, is it a typo or is it just actually no, called Darkula? It's actually called <laughs> wow. Darkula, the fishing service. Yeah. All right, so Darkula, new fishing as a service. FAS, I guess we're calling that. p -has. <laughs> um, Uses 20,000 domains to spoof brands and steal credentials from Android and iPhone users in more than 100 countries. I didn't even know that many countries had email. Um, they've been used against multiple services, 
including postal, financial, government, taxation departments, telcos, airlines, offering fraudsters over 200 templates. Someone uses Cherry MX Blues. Uh, one thing that makes the service stand out is that it approaches targets using the rich communication services protocol. Does anyone Ooh. know that protocol? What is Yes, that? yes. That is supposed to be it's the for like uh, MMS. successor it's for, for SMS. Yeah, It's supposed to replace it. Uh, Apple huh. just signed on to finally start using it. So. Have you ever been in one of those uh, group text messages and um, you know somebody sends you a message and it's all grainy, like the photo looks really, really crappy? Um, that's because it's using the old MMS system uh, and you don't have a blue bubble. You know, it's kind of is that why I can like things on Android now? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. So anyway, oh, yeah. this, this was the protocol meant to kind of like solve that problem because obviously MMS or, yeah. or SMS wasn't really meant for like multimedia. So anyways. Android, uh, Android did a workaround and when any of the Apple people used to like it, they actually programmed it in. So it would actually look like a, like they tried to like one up <laughs> mm -hmm. Apple. And then when you like it, they actually get like the whole message, like so-and-so like this. So every time I would just like everything. They pulled the Android Uno user. reverse card. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right that now. Was great. Yeah. So, I mean, like someone in chat said, 20k domains. Now I feel like an amateur. I kind of feel the same way. <laughs> Could you imagine um, that monthly or the yearly bill? That is that is true. I, I think a lot of them are maybe takeovers or they're like compromised registrars or, or compromised, mm -hmm. you know, registrar accounts, mm -hmm. right? Like criminals like to piggyback off of other criminals. They're not actually paying the bills. They're just stealing people's accounts. So most of these domains are Corey's domains. He just for they're my <laughs> domains. Please tell me where to send the Bitcoin so I can get don't tase me dot bro back. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, yeah, That's like a, honestly, though. The, the legitimate uh, thing to talk about, and I'm curious what other pen testers take. Should we be like buying these services? Like, because that seems wait, that seems how, pretty sick. Does how much, it, how it much did it say? How much did it cost? Yeah, that's what I want. I, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Does anyone know how much it costs? It doesn't Does it really say. Have a sales slick, you know, like today only. About I will say, yeah, I'll have to look on. I'll have to look on the old dark web. But um, it's pretty funny because looking at the. Uh, phishing campaign that they screenshot it looks straight off of my phone because i definitely got that exact message your package has arrived at the warehouse but Ooh. cannot be complete cannot be delivered yep. yeah so i mean these look very familiar um i've gotten very similar messages and mm -hmm. um i got one last week too so I, the other thing i wanted to or go ahead sorry michael oh well uh well, all i was gonna add is so apparently in addition to RCS. I don't know if this is an addition to or from the based on the article or if they're both similar, but it's using iMessage too. So one of the things the article mentioned was that iMessage, because it's end-to-end -end encrypted, allegedly, uh, that makes them more difficult to block the, these messages. So if you have some kind of you know any, anything in between that's reading the messages and detecting that they are you know phishing, then it's more difficult to block them because they're encrypted. Well, so the. Nice way those like uh, blocking services work for um, iMessage is they actually on device. So when you get the message, it'll read the message and look for um, indicators, right? That it could be something like that. And then it'll put it to a spam, right? If you have like a third party app that does that, and then it reports <coughs> that number you know, a into a database. So yeah. Does that well, work on iPhone too? Cause I know at one time, I don't know if this the case but i know at one time apple didn't allow apps to read the text it, no it, it definitely iPhone. does and you okay. it, it can read the message you have to give it that permission though like by default it just can't read text messages right but you okay. can give it that permission and in fact apple in, integrated more of like a spam filter detection system into the uh, into ios and so other apps can hook into that system just for doing that uh process yeah cool. i mean there is the option in the actual ios uh app or the, sorry the messages app which is an ios to report as phishing i don't know yeah. who's yeah. getting those reports but they, <laughs> it's there so what's Probably interesting is people. these this says uh darkula employs modern technologies like javascript javascript react docker and harbor so did they just build like a like kubernetes cluster and like offer that as a service <laughs> <laughs> yeah well so that's like, the other question i was going to ask everyone is do we need to talk about on the news when there's a large fishing campaign? Because it seems like that's just the boy who cried wolf, right? We're just like, hey, there was another fishing campaign, everyone. Oh, like, it. duh. Well, I, I will say this one is interesting because well, it's fishing. It's fast, which we love fast because we say that now. And it's, uh, you know, wait, what is everyone fast, got Corey, it. For, so. what, what's fast? 
fishing as a service, but not, for some reason it's, it's not it's, pass. It's fast. Fast with no T, not fast. P, pass is already platform as a service, so we yeah. had to add. Fast. I'm on the committee yeah. for more uh, acronyms. More acronyms, in, got it. Yeah, uh, cybersecurity, because we, we just don't have enough. You know, yeah. more acronyms. Like, let's just do a little better, everyone. So I think, does that, well, so does that we, mean we that need to overload the them too. <laughs> so does that mean are we getting a new committee now for acronyms as a service or yes, ass? Please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> And Corey is the head of it now. So I, I think that we're going to see more like attacking as a service or whatever, insert as a service for attacks, right? I think they're already out there, right? We have ransomware as a service, phishing. It's just going to continue on. Uh, I think we're going to have all of it. Uh, yeah. So our good friend Jeff, our good friend Jeff has a suggestion. It could be phishing at as a service. And then it's shortened to that. Yeah, yeah. I approve. So, I will say, I do have result. to take a, I have to take a brief, uh, like I'm going to left turn into the extreme grammatical pedantry uh, thing that I do. So fun fact about acronyms versus something called an in initialisms. Acronyms are when you pronounce the word like NASA, that's actually an acronym. But if you like DNS is not an acronym, it's an initialism because you say the letters instead of pronouncing the word. So you just there's a fun. A okay, nerd. That is almost as nerdy as the difference between a constellation and an asterism. I don't even, what is the difference? Is one the horoscope and one is a star? No, no. An, a, an, ast an asterism is just a group of stars that you recognize as a pattern. A constellation is an actual officially recognized grouping of that has an identity oh, oh, like oh. Orion. Okay. So you're saying Big Dipper is not a constellation. It's an asterism. Oh, no. We'll never find out. You cut oh, out. Wait, she, wait. She's nodding. You know she's... what? I'm. Yeah, no, no. Uh, you know what? Elon's minions launched a bunch of satellites, and there's always more interruptions right afterwards while they figure things out. But no, yeah, you, you pretty much nailed it. Big Dipper, asterism, Ursa Major, constellation. Well done. Uh, Bravo. My mind's all jaded now. Good to know. I'm going to go buy some fast. Uh. I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> So I mean, this is another this is another attack, but there's been some MFA bombing that focuses on iOS users, I guess, or Apple users. Um, yeah, I thought this one was really interesting. Yeah. So, so this, yeah. this uh, one is password thing, right? So they got the password. Yeah, they, they're flooding people's devices with password reset prompts. So mm -hmm. like, it's a built-in prompt that okay. whenever you try and do a password reset, it's just you're getting a bunch of these popping up on your iPhone or your iPad. Okay. And the response is allow or don't allow. So <laughs> they're relying on people to fatigue. Uh, e like, yeah, just either get sick yeah. of it and say, okay, fine, allow or not know what it is uh, and that kind of thing. So I thought it was pretty cool because it's. If uh, you're a five year old like, on your iPad, do you know which one to use? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> not really. The answer I, is I, no. Mike so it works again. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a legit prompt from Apple. You know, no spoofing for the attacker, no typos or suspicious URLs to alert. See, the user. now Apple's gonna have to come out with something. They already had to do like an extra device protection because people were stealing phones, right? As soon as they had unlocked, and as soon as like you type in a pen, you had access to everything. And now they have an extra protection. So if someone steals your phone and you're not at home, you won't do that. So now they're gonna have an extra protection where, like, I don't know, you have to it has to look at your i don't know what it's gonna have to okay do. but i got an idea i got an idea remember the meme of like this person tried to unlock your iphone it's just like a dog or something <laughs> i think that's what they need to do make yes. it so you have to scan a oh picture. you have to scan your face it's a picture yes. of some guy you and know, it sends the picture Russia. to the people at least it could be funny <laughs> But if you're five and you see your dad's face pop up and it says this person tried to reset your account, you're like, okay, I accept. But if it's like a yeah. dog, you're like, also accept. <laughs> <laughs> or in your case, if it's a cat. If it's a cat. You got to know your target yep. here. You can't just yeah. be Absolutely. sending these. That is not what the internet would do. I, I mean, this is, <laughs> yeah, this is terrifying. Like this, I don't know. I, I, I really think about the way that iOS devices are deployed a lot of the times in like airport yeah. kiosks and like, <laughs> like, yeah. or like in a hotel chain, it's the meeting calendar. Or oh the my Zoom gosh. Bridge. I just think of the ways that they're deployed and it's like, Hey, 
accept yeah. or deny. You're like, I don't know. I guess deny. I mean, That's my default. Deny. Cor- but Corey's maybe- right. There's so many of those devices that are out there that don't have the device locked down and you can just grab the credentials right off of them. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Who knows? I mean, this is a, I guess MFA fatigue is a thing and everyone has to live in this world of MFA fatigue. There is a captcha on the site from Apple. So I'm sure that couldn't be by. Oh, that anyway. stops them every time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm sure they'll have, they, they probably have a low severity pen test finding from three years ago that says captcha bypass possible. And they just yes. never did anything about it. Yes. I honestly, I wonder though, how many people are just clicking it and they're like, it went away. And then their account gets. <laughs> it <went away>. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Like I found and, the solution. Uh, you just click accept. Yes. You're probably right though. There are probably a lot of people out there that just get fed up and click accept yes. to make it go away without yeah. even bother thinking about it or calling anybody first. Yeah, mm-hmm. most people probably are just like, oh, this is some weird bug that's happening. Let me just click allow. Right. Yeah. So I have the uh so Apple came out with this uh end-to-end device encryption uh key just a little while ago. And the way that it works is that your devices get kind of like onboarded. So I wonder if that would happen the, the same way, right? So if somebody else tried to log into your account, like your iCloud, for example, they can't see anything unless they bring on a device that can actually decrypt it, right? Um, I, w- I wonder if that would work. Uh, that'd be interesting. Now I got to try. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, so Nikki Freeze in chat says, I personally don't get MFA fatigue. I'm always happy to click accept, <laughs> which then he says, as long as I'm the one requesting the access. Yeah, I think the idea here is, the the idea with MFA fatigue is you can't read your notifications be, or do anything with your phone. It's essentially a denial of service because it keeps repeatedly popping up, closing out all your other windows and saying, hey, click, do you want to allow this? Yes or no? Hey, yeah. do you want to allow this? Yes or no? And you, the attacker would just persistently keep doing that until you hit allow. Otherwise, it's essentially a denial of service on your phone. It's a little bit different with this built-in thing, like Michael mentioned. Since it's built in, you can't just suppress. If it's coming from Okta, I, as a user, can say, okay, I'll just suppress all notifications from Okta, then I'm not worried about it. But if it's a built-in thing, how would you, you can't, like, it's essentially denial of service. So, yeah. I guess it's good. It's it's forcing people to go outside and look at trees and touch grass and all that <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, there you Exactly. Don't use your exactly. phone. Exactly. That's yeah. the solution. That is actually the solution. Go analog. That's why I, yeah, that's Go why analog. I still use my flip phone. No, I'm just In kidding. 2024, I know that's a alien concept to everybody, but there is this thing called the world out there. <laughs> and there's um, other people that aren't behind a screen. You can actually, you know, see and poke them out there. Lies. I don't believe I'm just, it's a conspiracy. You know. I don't believe you. <laughs> he, he says that coming from the virtual world himself. I know, Indeed. right? Indeed. <laughs> yeah. All right, next Are week, you like just a for Diablo you, boss? I'll sit out on my porch. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't understand this concept, and I'm scared. Let's, quick, change topics. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyone have any articles they are just chomping at the bit to talk about? I mean, more uh more linksys routers being compromised that what? linksys routers Wait, exist do people still? still buy linksys router like who owns a linksys router uh, like i don't, I don't know. know i don't know but the worm taking them over is called the moon the moon <laughs> I, why I isn't just feel it like, called i just feel like that's the coolest name ever reference. like oh what worm is it it's the moon worm like, so your, your router got <laughs> mooned your router so you get, got gets exploited yeah wow this is a constant one we always hear about, right? And it's yeah. just pretty much someone using a bunch of home routers as a proxy. 40,000 already infected with 1,000 going up every day. There's a there's more than just Linksys. There's Asus yeah. and stuff. And I believe uh, the SANS Internet Storm Center had a uh, little bit more information on the exact firmwares that are being attacked and everything like that. As me, every time I read one of these, I go and make sure that my uh, routers are on auto update. And for some reason, they usually aren't, and I don't know why. But uh, yeah. someone's probably already on it to tell you the truth. I will but... say my router <laughs> blipped the other day, and I was like, "Hmm, Uh-oh. That's probably not good." And it came right back on, which is a little, little concerning. Did you, you know, what you should do is reset it to default password and username, yeah. so then you know oh, it's secure. It makes I, it easier to get in. I don't say it, I don't set it to default. I just change it to admin admin, and no one ever knows, like because mm. that's not the default password on it, and they they don't guess that. Well, it's they do now. I, Yeah, that's definitely <laughs> some uh, 3D chess you're playing with yourself there. No, you may I, have just checkmated yourself. <laughs> yeah. I think you a lot it. of these Linksys routers like this when you're like, who who buys these old routers? And it's like, I 
see them constantly at small businesses to where they're like, ah, oh, we yeah. just have to like provide wireless internet for like the three people that come in through here. So they're like, yeah. okay, cable modem, the, the cheapest router that we've had for like, that's 15 years old. It still works, whatever. Um, and it's doing, it's broadcasting the Wi-Fi that is insecure. So yeah, they're, they have like WSP or WPA and it's, it's bad. Dude. But I, you don't need to, you don't need to crack it because it's like, they have like the, the password to the router. That's like just right. Yeah, no, it's stuck, stuck onto the, it. It's stuck yes. to the, like the board yeah. behind or it's like, the, you know, well, welcome, welcome to our yoga studio. Like here's all the logins for admin purposes. I will on say everything. I was at a anti-siphon training. I think this was the one in Baltimore. I think, Ryan made the password and he wrote it down somewhere, but no one could figure out how to connect because the password was like something to do with like crustaceans or something, and no one could figure out how to spell crustacean. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to nice. do it. That wasn't my password, by the way, but that oh, is my <laughs> I do what I don't think I've asked this on here before, but what Soho routers do you guys actually recommend? Because I don't like mine anymore. Um, I mean, Unify stuff is good. Yeah, um, Unify stuff is What right is the other one, place, Ralph, or... that you were talking about last Not week? Not Ubiquity, is it? Or... Firewalla makes some good products, too. Those have come up a bunch of times, too, from, like, if you want to get into some other security stuff. DIY, Unify. PFSense setups. You yeah, can buy PFSense, OpenSense. Uh, those are sense or whatever. Devices. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, hear I mean, dude, this just get good. Unify. I like how all the good solutions are like, no, I don't want to do that. Okay, well, then... Uh, <laughs> nothing here's what okay here's the good news if you ever get in trouble for something and they say we have your ip just say my my router was compromised 10 years ago yeah okay it's been on the dark web this I, russian guy I, called me and told me to change my router password it wasn't to this me. and i did it i got amazing. hacked this works yes. this is a great yes. defense what i will tell you not to buy is a fortinet because they're super expensive <laughs> and they get hacked like are they compromised every week or something i, don't know. I will admit as as a security analyst who used to have to look at fortinet logs they actually had like when a malware signature would hit, they had a link to that signature. You would like crappy that link and throw it in a browser and it would tell you everything about it. That was the coolest thing, uh, triaging alerts back then, but it's sure. been a long time since I've seen a Fortinet to tell you the truth. The good news <laughs> is that the attackers will drop the event logs for you so you don't get it. <laughs> yes. Or you can just fish someone by injecting a link. No, oh, that's a great job. To credit to They're too. like threat is <laughs> the old CTI uh, watering hole attack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Classic. All right. Do... Someone's dog is not happy about the podcast. <laughs> yes, it's um, it's my dog. The it, the deer in the neighborhood have been tormenting them. The the deer in my neighborhood know that the dogs won't go past the fence, so they stand like three feet away and go. Nee, 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 nee. It's it's hilarious, but yeah, it's it's my dogs. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. Let's talk about digital signs that are ga gathering our data. Just for fun. This is an old trick. This is an old trick. Okay, first of all, I don't know what Brookline is. I just I want to get that out there first thing. I don't know what that is. I don't know where it is. Does anyone know where Brookline Village is? It, oh. Is it in mm -hmm. New York? New York, maybe. All right. Well, it's a flyover. We're calling it a flyover town because no one's ever heard of it. But there are digital signs uh, scattered throughout this town. Uh, seven foot electronic ink displays. Um, they display black and white messages such as the town's official schedule, advertisements Ooh. for businesses, bus schedules, and current weather. Like if you're standing outside looking at a sign wondering what the weather is, you should probably reconsider your life. It's um, in Massachusetts. <laughs> okay. Um, basically, they're a Wi-Fi. So they're doing like kind of the karma attack, right? Is that is that essentially what they're doing? They're so, um, they're you, gathering what phones what wi-fi networks phones are searching so for this is like the old they're, trick they're gathering the mac addresses trick. of the this phones right? Trick, right but they're actually they're actually you like encrypting them and or whatever they're doing to them and trying to make it at least anonymizing, a little bit private. So anonymizing. Sign, that's the proper your wi-fi networks and encrypting them so is this I, your I mac address know. which this is okay but, well I'm assuming Ralph's going to bring this up too, but the fun fact about iPhones is they randomize your Mac yes, address. Yes, they randomize your Mac address per BSI ID. Android yes. does this as well, okay? Because yep. they caught onto this a while ago. Marketers mm -hmm. and, and advertisers were doing this, you know, because your phone would probe out looking for a known SSID and your Mac address would be part of that. Now, now they randomize it. So every si single BSSID that you connect to is a different Mac address. Now, it'll be the same one if you connect to the same BSI, 
B S I D over and over again, but it will yep. randomize it. So then it becomes significantly more difficult to see where you're going because you have a different ID. All over. I, I got to feel like this company that programmed this is realizing that it was not worth the effort yeah. because it's super meaningless data. Like the, so the idea the company is trying to do is they're trying to say, here's how long people stood at the sign looking at our amazing thing that cost $7,000 or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, but really, like, the, the logic has got to be a little bit questionable because, like, you know, the, the MAC addresses are randomized. They're like, wow, 50 people just walked up and looked at the sign. This is amazing. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, yes. you know, it's just one person with 50 different so, MAC addresses. Well, what I don't see in this article is them using Bluetooth, which actually a lot of uh, devices are using to identify different people, right? Um, Bluetooth does send out uh, IDs. It, it's a little bit more of a secure... Uh, protocol but as far as tracking bluetooth is one that is being currently used so yeah i mean let's just say the developers at sufa watched one too many episodes of mr robot and uh <laughs> you know just decided <laughs> to put that in play and really you could have just used uh, multiple people have mentioned wouldn't a proximity proximity sensor do the same thing or maybe a camera <laughs> or just a motion sensor yeah. maybe um but yeah is this one of the first instances of this being out in like the public area because i think with like the cameras I, I know stores do this yeah to where they'll they'll be able to tell that hey you spent like a lot of time that's why they want you to use their clear. apps too yeah, if you that, use their app, yeah, track, and, yeah and i know there's there's stores that do this if you're spending an, an inordinate amount of time looking at toothpaste they're going to send you a you know a coupon on their app for toothpaste but that's within <laughs> like the private store to where you kind of go it's in yeah, that, it's not in it's public in gray area yeah. where it's like, well, you you kind of agreed by entering the store that you're going to be monitored by the store with like cameras, motion sensors, Bluetooth, um, beaconing, etc. Sure. But this is out like in public at a bus stop. And it's like, well, I didn't consent to this. Like, I'm just walking down the street. Yeah, I, I think it. it's I think it's funny that a CEO had to sit down and explain this when it's completely useless. Mm -hmm. It's like. Yeah. The, it, right, the CEO is smiling and explaining it, and then saying, "Why? Why did we do this? It's not worth it." Um, but yeah, they're, they're going to get tricked like uh, like Uber did, where they had like the, the the one guy that put like sixty sixty cell phones in a uh, wheelbarrow, <laughs> and just like you know move them around in his face. Like I would just want to like create like surge pricing because it's like oh, here, holy cow, they're just <laughs> his own car Uber right now. Yeah, and create so your own like, traffic jam. <laughs> Yeah, you put them classic. in a wagon and pull them around, and it's like you have this. This you would inflate the the surge pricing, and then somebody would come along and pick them, pick up that one rider, yeah. uh, and charge them like you know. Yeah. Like, like, All right, let's out. uh, let's let's decompress the next story. Oh no! Ah, yeah, that was everyone knows what it is. Yeah, is uh, nice. you're, you're so correct, Ex except for maybe Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing it's this story. Oh, he made, oh, Ryan's oh. an expert. Yeah, so this one is a little scary. It's I thought it was kind of a taste of our own medicine moment because we oh. talk about supply chain attacks all the time on this show, right? But this one was like, it's too close to home and it's too soon. Um, so basically, for those that don't know, someone put a backdoor in XZ, uh, which XZ is a compression decompression algorithm correct it's like a you know you've got gzip you've got xzip you got zlib you got 7zip lzma there's a bunch of these like helper binaries for decompressing or compressing um different formats right not algorithm it's it's a huge yeah there, there's like a million binary. memes around this uh and it's mainly that like there's a huge project and there's this little tiny one maintained by like one guy right like, yes oh, yeah, it's like this is yeah. one of those projects okay yeah totally yeah so <laughs> Basically, certain versions of it between 5.6.0 and 5.6.1 were had a backdoor in it. Does anyone know anything about the backdoor itself? Is it is it opening up a service? Is it calling back remotely? Oh, what what is the actual yeah. malware? Yeah, so I, so I dropped a uh, I, I dropped a kind of diagram in there. This did. I was looking for this exact thing. Yeah, but basically, it's kind of complicated. Um, so they it's like but elegant like it's elegant yeah like i kind of want to like go through and like look at it all myself just because it's like kind of like you can tell someone spent a ton of time like going through this and making sure that it actually would get into the binary um but basically what it does is it doesn't just like add you know like your user to the machine or anything but it basically like 
the way it hooks into uh, system D, it's basically like, it's not an authentication bypass. It's more of like a RCE. Like anything you send to it will be passed to like the system calls. The, I'm trying to understand the stage one that's up on the screen because disguising the malware as a corrupt file and then uncorrupting it is just, right. it's, it's mind blowing because it's like, and it's, I mean, granted, I'm not like an AV vendor I would have more money. I'd be making like you know custom <laughs> Super Bowl commercials if I did. But like, how how do you detect for that? It's like it's a it's a corrupt file. Like, how do you uncorrupt that file and go? Oh, hey, wait a minute. This is actually malware. Well, that's why it's so difficult, right? Because you're putting something into like a repository that everyone can see, and even the uh, maintainer of the repository gave the classic like looks good to me, and like push that um push that code into it because it. Basically, what it looked like was a test case to where XZ would like uncompress it. Mm -hmm. And so it the idea was that you would have all of the data for the actual backdoor in this like, you know, uncompressing like test case, which is just supposed to be like a bunch of random data. Um, and then but actually what happens once it gets built is they use this crazy like awk and said stuff to basically change the data into um, the actual binary. And then that gets compiled. Yeah. So it's just a really good supply chain attack, essentially. I think um, I was reading. And I will say, I use Clam maybe, so I'm sure I couldn't possibly yeah, be affected by you're this. You're not going to be affected. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was also reading, I guess they submitted like uh, an issue with the project. And then yeah. this was part of the patch. Like the vulnerability mm -hmm. was like part of the patch to fix the issue that well, they, they fixed the real the issue. <laughs> yeah. oh, it, was built, it was building they, up that yeah. trust. That's over, wicked. Yeah. Over, yeah. Like, over like two years at least. Um, you know, building up that trust. So first having that that OSINT to basically like pick up that, hey, there's this package maintainer that they're having a hard time. They're they're struggling <laughs> to no, I mean they they were they and they and here's like kind of a, a OPSEC tip for developers, not victim blaming or anything, but it's like if you are having issues keeping up to date on your packages, maybe don't drop that publicly. Like that someone pick that up and they go, <laughs> hey, you know, uh, let me take let me take this uh, software ma maintenance off your hand. Let me be the maintainer, um, you know. And so they they work that angle over the course of two years. There's also a fascinating article on uh, the um, time zones that the commits were made from, and some errors in the commit times that point for this being like Eastern Europe when they're trying to make it look like it was coming from China. All sorts of fascinating things there to to dig into. Um, and the dates and everything kind of line up too. If it was like the first commit was around February twenty second, twenty twenty two, and I think at that time what was going on in Eastern Europe was all the build up for the upcoming invasion of Ukraine. So, well, people were also saying that uh, basically just by looking at the like Git commit dates, they were keeping basically like regular office hours, um, which is interesting because if it was just like you know some you know, random person who is trying to get access to, you know, people's computers, they would probably not be doing it during, you know, normal, normal business hours. And they wouldn't stick to a consistent schedule with all their, um, their commits. So I do want to give a shout out to the guy who made that image Frogger or Thomas, right? Yeah. He actually does has a really good thread Intel book that, uh, oh, yeah. has very good graphics in it. So that as you'd imagine, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. that's awesome. I mean, let's let's go through the classic supply chain uh, stages of grief. Number one is I don't have this problem because I never update. Um, <laughs> you're out of date, so you're not vulnerable. Yeah, I will say the period in which, yeah, it only would apply to people who are running the bleeding edge version and also multiple distributions. So like Debian, Kali, all the common distributions did, they do run latest versions of things. So if you... Basically, if you apt get upgraded, apt get dis upgraded, or whatever sure. during the time, then during the time when this package was in production, you would be affected. I guess no. I guess again. Corey, there was there was different. It was like varying. In essence, if you pulled from the Git repository, then you would be affected. But the other um, actual OSs hadn't upgraded yet. They're kind of like behind, depending on what yeah. version you're on, right? So like usually they only do like security fixes as opposed to bug fixes right. and those so there was only like a small subset of os versions that were actually 
that had gotten like rolled into their releases, right? Right. So essentially, people are saying in chat only Debian unstable is affected. Cali's bleeding edge, so that would be affected. Uh, Cali um, rolling is just always just yeah. Dark. Cali so rolling is yeah, yeah. exactly. So, um, I think that what's going to happen from this is like the reason that this was actually detected was someone at Microsoft was trying to troubleshoot why it was taking so long to log in with SSH. Um, and that's how they <laughs> discovered the back door. They're like, what the heck is going on? Um, so I bet you in like the next month or so, there's going to be, you know, every like open source maintainer is probably looking at their code and being like, wait a minute, there was this weird file that was committed, but I thought it was just, you know, test data. So I wonder if, you know, there's going to be, you know, in the next month or so, people are going to come out and say, oh, by the way, this other, uh, you know, package that literally everyone uses uh, was backdoored, you know, six years ago. Yeah. Something like that. I mean, we know supply chain attacks are common and we know they're hard to defend against because of the complexity that we're looking at right here. I mean, this is this is a great case study, but, um, you know, the whole like layered multiple years, you know, there's so many things that went right for the attacker here. Although I won, does anyone know if there was actually any like results, hacks from this? I mean, are they going after individual developers specifically? Are they going after companies? Because my thought is most companies aren't really using like bleeding edge, unstable things. Or do you think they just got really unlucky, spent two years setting up this attack, and then someone figured it out yeah. way sooner than they anticipated? I yeah, yeah. I think it, it was like it got caught before it got into all the big like mainstream packages. But I think that was probably the target. So yeah, we're no, safe it, today, but we all got lucky. I we guess we're safe the, uh, for now for the thing that someone happened to find. It's I, like a meteorite is... that just missed my house. And I'm I like, guess we're fine. lucky that it was open source, right? Because, you know, in a closed source, it, it would be harder for this to be detected. So. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Although, I mean, for the like, would, yeah, I mean, it would X tool detect this? Probably not, but you're likely going to hear that from a lot of vendors being like, we yes, totally would have found this. Like, well, yeah, they would now. They, they would, they would now. find like, it now. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, you're, told, you're going to be able to find it. So they'll set up a demo and being like, look, here's somebody trying to do this thing and it detects it. Please give us more money. We need more Super Bowl ads. Um, Once you have yeah. the IOCs, it's <laughs> even Clam maybe will probably detect it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're good, but the Corey. Key, you're good. Yeah. The key is before that, you know, that's the key. So, mm. but I, I, I'm, yeah. I don't think this is the only uh, developer that's been targeted like this. Like it, it probably has some sort of campaign of go out there and try to take over maintenance of software packages. Totally. Well, the question, yeah. the question comes in is how many of, of this style of attack of the takeover, the maintaining has happened how much of this stuff now actually is backdoored and how much would we be able to find has well, one thing that's... Been done, has this has this been done before and we just never realized it one thing that's kind of annoying because i saw this when it first came out and i was like oh like whatever and i kept seeing it over and over and i was like oh let me go like look into this um microsoft actually or i guess github took down the xz repository so you can't even i mean there's other ways you can go and look at it because people like basically cloned it um but like the official repository is at least as of like a you know a couple hours ago it wasn't even up so you can't Literally. go and like look into all that that's Up why I just use seven zip because I just know it's backdoored and I, I consider that a feature. <laughs> so. But it's faster. It's, it's faster. It's that. worth the speed. I don't it's care. It's worth the speed. Yeah. It's and the it. compression is really excellent. You know? I played for yeah. Rar. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I don't know what kind of shoes y'all like, but apparently Vans got breached. So if you're cool, you probably got breached. Oh, I literally no, just bought them like two weeks ago. I love my Chucks, dude. They're amazing. Sure. That's a different. That's, that's a different not, company. That's not Vance. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is a problem with Florida people. They don't actually own any shoes. They just have flip flops. Hey, Come hey, on, man. You'd have to hey. tell everyone live. <laughs> You're like, oh, I know shoes. Remember the ones with the closed toes? No, I don't own any closed toed <laughs> shoes. I'm, I'm from Florida. I only have Crocs and flip flops. I'm sorry, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I, hey, I, as long as you're not wearing those those shoes that have the toes built into them, those things the, are the just five fingers or whatever. Crocs. Yeah, those things are not great. Yeah, so, yeah I, I saw Crocs, Crocs that had toes built into them. I was like, wow, that's like next level. That's yeah. The details are a little there. dicey, yeah. but de you know, essentially email, full name, phone number, billing, shipping, um, order history, total order value. So get ready for some fun uh, spam messages about shoes. Mm. Yes. Wow. How much information uh, would you give to Vans? 
Yeah, I was like, you can lie to Vans when they ask you about stuff. Like, mm. what's your email address? Like, make one of the custom ones that a throwaway email address. Like, you wouldn't your, lie to your favorite why, shoe company. You, you wouldn't would never lie to your favorite lie shoe to your company. Favorite. Like, what's so, your date of birth? Who, like, I don't know, November 1996. But like, how many people buy shoes online? Oh, I do. You, yeah. you uh, buy your shoes I, online? I don't I know. Online. Who, who my feet are not growing, person? dude. I know my size. I know, I know <laughs> but I feel, I, feel, I feel like shoes are just so like a size nine in one place is not a size nine in the other. Dude, like, Amazon, I don't has, a yeah, I agree. Amazon yeah, has a GPT for that. Don't worry. Hey, do you know how hard it is to find a shoe store where you actually have someone help you get the shoes? Not hard at all. I live, in, your actual I live in a city that has shoe stores and in malls. So, I don't you know, want I anyone, just... <laughs> anyone helping wow. me. I know where you are. <laughs> all right. I mean, yeah. I mean, I will say it was claimed by Alfie. So, um, mm. did, all right. So my real question, how did they get in? Does it say? It doesn't say, um, mm. but let's assume it was the normal LP stuff of, yeah, calling the old help desk saying my shoes don't fit. And uh, no, that was a bad joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I would assume it was a high privilege employee that compromised and then they, you know, rolled to the environment. And to segue into the next story, they probably targeted oh, ESXi servers. No. Worldwide Agenda Ransomware. Apparently that's the name of it. it sounds like a video game. Um, so yeah, the there's a new ransomware targeting specifically ESXi servers. Um, improved variant includes fileless injection, BYOVD, and more. Mm. So it's updated as of what two years ago. Like that's none of that stuff is new. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's written in Rust. So uh, it's oh cool. man, um, they are hip. Memory hipster. safe. Memory safe. <laughs> it's funny because you know that the, the words are just so bad it's called agenda and then there was a version called new agenda and then there's now the newest one is called world agenda. <laughs> oh, sorry <laughs> worldwide agenda no trust me after broadcom took over vmware you're getting ransomware either way <laughs> that's true i mean i no. guess i'm like yeah. I, I don't not to pull the why is this a news article uh thing but like is, doesn't every ransomware target ESXi? Like, isn't that just they a standard should. TTP? They should. I just think about, like, you know, Alfie, that we know they target ESXi, so. Yeah. Yeah. Keep close watch over your admin privileges. Regularly update security project products. Perform scans and backup data. That's the uh, recommended steps. So yeah, I wonder so if yeah. there's going to be any ransomware for, like, Proxmox. Oh, that's going to be Is the next scary? one on the hit list. I mean, like, think about it this way, though. Think about it this way. Most of the time, the way that the ESXi attacks work is they use the same password for all of the devices. All the root accounts. Or another way is that it, maybe it is unpatched, right? Like, they just haven't updated that ESXi box, so then they have an exploit. And then the final way is that the, they get access to vCenter, right? So um, Active Directory is integrated. They get a privileged account. And when they access right. vCenter, then that's, like, kind of, like, all of the underlying infrastructure mm -hmm. and at that point then they can i mean that's the best right. thing to ransomware right so yeah so that is an interesting oh, yeah. question i i really don't know i mean what do people use instead i mean there's cloud so that's a big thing i think a lot of organizations are probably moving away from on-prem self-hosted vm platforms in the first place yeah. i mean there's proxmox there's is zen still a thing i mean what else is out there <laughs> zen technically is a thing but it's not like as big um there's uh what is it Natan Natan or nutanix or whatever i can i'm pronouncing that yeah i feel like people um, have moved into these like medium-sized yeah. companies yeah, yeah what is the other one um there, there's a nutanix. couple out there. cisco has some stuff don't don't they i don't think cisco does i could be no. wrong no no it's i mean hyper v if you already have windows yeah. licenses then oh yeah hyper v extra that's a big one that one but yeah i think for most small businesses right like that small to medium business which is kind of like been the sweet spot for esxi they'll probably end up moving to um proxmox I, I think unless there's like a really unless they're like kind of in the the larger enterprise and they might move to some of the other um you know uh products that are out there open stack is that still a thing or something like that like your self-hosted cloud type yeah, of thing? yeah but that's like open stacks meant to like replicate aws for example Right, it's supposed to be like self-service for all of the services inside of a cloud provider, as opposed to like necessarily just VMs and. Mm. Yeah. I wonder True. if people are switching over, if they're going to switch over to, like you said, cloud stuff instead of saying, you know, let's go with Proxmox or something like that. 
Yeah. I, I feel like nowadays, if, if whatever you're deploying, if it isn't supported by Terraform, you probably aren't deploying it. Like, that's just like a fact. So I don't know what VM platforms are supported. Does anyone know? I assume Proxmox is. Well, I tried to use Terraform with Proxmox a few months ago. Um, and uh, I did Terraform in it and then Terraform apply and got a bunch of red stuff and uh, never tried it again. <laughs> that was the supply chain attack uh, that you're supposed to hit yeah. accept on your iPhone and then it goes through. I've recently yeah. rolled out uh, Proxmox with Terraform. It, it, it does work, um, but yeah, there's... There, oh, it was it, totally a user issue on my end. Yeah, it, it happened. A skill issue, as they say, yeah. as, the, as the Gen Zs say. But anyways, the token yeah. zoomer to, as the token zoomer didn't say, and I somehow did here um, to the bigger point, as more companies roll into other products, let's say Proxmox becomes the next product in there. You will see more attacks moving that direction. Yeah, Proxmox totally. replied to you. <laughs> <laughs> you I was surprised at how fast that was. That's good customer service, right? There. This is why our discord. <laughs> this is why our discord is the best. Join our discord if you're not already in there discord.gg slash bhis yeah um i mean yeah like i think the other thing about this esxi stuff is it's one of those like you're self-selecting it's like the people who you put typos in your fishes so the dumb people click them same with this if you have esx you're probably not patched you probably reuse <laughs> no, i'm just <laughs> kidding but i do think there's a little bit of where there's smoke there's fire right like if you're heavily using esx and it all has the same password, you're already probably a ripe target for ransomware to begin yeah. with. Um, so, and the impact is going to be significant, right? It's like you hit the ESXi stuff, it's most likely crown jewels. No one's putting like only a dev environment inside of ESX. And then you're probably off to the races on a pretty decent ransomware payout. So I guess, yeah. I mean, the other question I have for people, I'm curious to get people's takes. What are people's thoughts on domain tied auth or not? For, for ESX. Mm. Is it is it safer to go local? Do you go domain tied? Because so, like on one I hand, if you compromise a high level account, like I don't know, it's a tough, I don't know. I think that's a good question, like? Corey, because think about it this way, right? Like does your whole company need to log into vCenter, right? Like, no. like And you're like, okay, Hopefully. well, I only let a group, special admins, special people can log in. But it's kind of like, is there only 10 special people? You could just make local accounts, right? Like, right. You, you know, you could separate them. And I, and I think that comes down to like layered security, right? Whether you, you know, getting access to one account leads to everything, right? And when you deal with single sign on that, you know, could be the case. Regulatory it, stuff yeah. for that too. I, I would imagine you have to have a certain type of auths oh. that then yeah. pull into this. We have to use this in order to use that. And then sure. policy, red tape. Yeah. Yeah. That's... I mean, I think the the chat is kind of agreeing with you. They're basically saying like use domain tied auth, but only like burner or you know break glass type accounts that have vaulted passwords, or mm -hmm. use you know MFA. Um, I'm sure getting ESXi set up working with TOTP based MFA is super easy and not a really painstaking process. Um, my experience with ESX is anytime I open the command line, uh, it just nukes a VM. So that's um, <laughs> yeah. that's just my. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not being more certified. It might be. It might have been the XZ backdoor, but yeah. Every time I would try to mess around with, every time I try to mess around with the settings, uh, I would nuke a VM, and I'd be like, <clears throat> "I guess I'm screwed." Thanks, CSXI. Does Does uh, Proxmox have like a thing? You know how like if you have VMware Workstation installed on your host, you can connect it to ESXi, and it's like flawless. I don't have to really do anything. Does Proxmox have something like that? No, they there's have a no web interface. So you don't need to do that. Yeah. In there's no like client yeah. side software, but the client software and VMware is really nice. Like, I, no, I, I, Are you I like it. it. I like it. I, I have used it for so long. And then also I'll, trying to like maintain anti siphon classes, right? Like, that's what we, that's one of the main uh, uh, virtualization softwares that we use, or at least that we used to tell people to use. And just because it's a, just a little bit user friendly back when it was free and stuff like that. But there, yeah. there's a recent project that just came out. Um, and I, now I'm going to have to find it. I can't remember the name. I just saw it on Twitter. But what they did is they took Proxmox and um, they used uh, Terraform and Ansible. And what it is, is it deploys a uh, dev lab for you. So it kind of deploys the Proxmox. And then you can say that you want uh, a Windows lab and it will deploy it for you automatically. Is it it's like cool. And it's designed for security like testing. I think it's Luna. There's so many. There's like, what is it? Snap yeah, it Labs. Is, is it Luna? There's. It starts with an L. Um, yeah, I just saw it. It's, it's a newer project, and it has a little command line that you can do for just, just doing labs. Just 
it's really just so that when you want to test out that new Windows exploit and you don't want to, you know, set it up on another machine, that it, this this is kind of the idea. So, yeah. Anyhow. No, I mean, I think the VM platform thing is like an always an ongoing, evolving thing. It's like, well, VMware yeah. Workstation's easy for certain things, but then like cloud is easier for other things. And I don't know. I It's a tough, there's not really like an easy uh, yeah. solution. And it is preference think. too. I really do agree with that. Yeah. I'm going to have to use that uh, new VMware DSXI to Proxmox import here soon. Yep, there it is. <laughs> yeah, or, I mean, Docker is good for certain things. I don't know. It's it's tough. There's a lot of different... I think we've kind of stratified the tools into different things. I think most companies are likely doing that as well, of like, yeah. well, some things got moved to cloud, right? Some things got moved to, um, you know, Docker or other, like, CICD type stuff. You know, you probably don't have a lot of ESXi VMs that are building code anymore, right? You probably have, um, you know, runners or other, like, burnable solutions, so to speak, that are building your code. I don't know. There's a lot of like um, movement of different products of into different pieces. So I don't know. I would guess most organizations are moving away from like your ESXi type solutions, but I don't know. I could be wrong. I mean, Graham keeps telling me to use Kubernetes and I'm like, no, go I Kubernetes I will never go back. <laughs> Self-hosted Kube. I will say easy. like oh, learning, Learning kind of the DevOps uh, tools has been super, super helpful for like red teaming things because it makes it super easy to like figure out how to get things in environments. Um, so I kind of wish I had more like DevOps experience so I could like leverage that for pen testing. Well, didn't you hear? I mean, nowadays the DevOps standard is just if it works on your machine, just send me your machine. So, <laughs> I mean, that's what that's Vagrant Docker. is, right? <laughs> that's Docker. <laughs> Kubernetes is like it works on our machines, so send me this all of them, I guess. <laughs> just give me a bunch of YAML and don't tell me what it does. Yes. yes. <laughs> There's no back doors there. Don't mind this giant YAML. base 64 encoded YAML blob no, called it's shell code. <laughs> it's fine. All right, anyone have any final articles? We're getting close. We're getting into the 51-minute mark. Ooh, the 10th hour. The 11th hour. Wait, how many hours are there in a day? The 23rd hour. 23rd hour. This one's a little dark, but I like the Discord one by 404. A little dark, eh? A little dark. All little right. Dark. All right. What do you Criminals, got? We kind of talked about this did we, uh, in the past. We, well, we we've talked about talked these types past, of yeah. attacks. I don't know. Not this one specifically, but we've talked about using child csam or whatever you want to call it to essentially like cause someone else to be banned or canceled i can't actually read this i have to sign up for a free account so i hate this website um, <laughs> so do you want to summarize it for us wade uh pretty much it's like uh ban a discord as a service whatever that is How, would someone mm. make a cool acronym yeah. up for that one badass but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they'll log in. Kind of they'll yeah. log into one of these Discord servers, and so uh, one popular service at the digital underground. Oh, so like Instagram, I guess, is a big a big thing for this, which I didn't know about. Where people will do it for as low as sixty dollars. Uh, but now, since Discord is becoming more popular, you, they pay someone. They go into your Discord, drop a lot of this material, and then get it banned. Uh, it just wow. sucks. You got to have such good local admins, like that, looking around and trying to stomp this out as quickly as possible. Uh, I'm wondering if Discord. I don't think Discord's released any like information on how how often this happens, but I think it would be interesting to follow and to follow these people to see what else they start with doing with this. I mean, yeah. dude, as a as a blue teamer, this type of stuff is like my worst nightmare. Just because I feel like if if people are doing it to this, imagine if they're doing it to people. Right. If someone yeah. drops it on your computer and hopefully you have a digital forensics guy who's good enough to be able to be able to see that. Uh, I so mean, I, that's yeah. why we've talked about this before, you know, sending people messages or emails or things like that. And like the on device versus cloud scanning. I think I mean, it's tough, like moderating a discord. I mean, I'm sure the people in this in our chat can attest to this, but moderating a discord can be a kind of an actual job. It like is. it's a lot it of is. work and i think there's you, a lot of unpaid volunteers you know out there running huge discord communities and aren't going to be able to meet you know meet the demands um of this you know it's like the whole content yeah. moderation on facebook or any any content moderation a task whatsoever is a really difficult thing to do right it's content moderation is really hard um just as a as a general like job function um so it's, I guess it's like, hard. Yeah. It's it's not at all glorious, and it is so 
it's one of those things that when it's working right, people don't pay attention to it. And when all it takes is one failure and all of a sudden it's, it's a huge discussion and people yep. are freaking out and, you know, the, and just big shout out to our nerd herders and, and the people you guys do an awesome job because I've had to take care of discord servers myself. And as soon as they get busy, it, it it's exponential the amount of work yep. that goes up yeah and, the, and i mean one definitely to, to sorry go ahead. To like why this is one of the reasons to point to like why do we not allow you know in discord servers just blindly posting links and they go i just joined and i want to drop links and it's like yeah you can't <laughs> like it's like why it's like this is why like these are some of the reasons why like the amount of things that show up in the mod log for people trying this type of stuff and getting it shut down because we just don't allow links. Yeah. I really wonder like, what is the appeal process for discord? If, if you've, if you've experienced that, please reach out and let us know. Cause I'm curious what that's like. Um, you know, if you, if your discord gets banned, are you able to appeal that decision? A lot of tech companies don't have any appeals process or other like way of getting in chat. You can't just call up discord and be like, Hey, uh, it's me. Uh, our Discord got banned. Like that's not a thing. So, um, I like, know. what? I, yeah, I'm I know. In video game realms right now, like with video game companies, <laughs> it's an automated process that there is no appeal right. to anymore. Yeah. I don't because know of the scale, and like Discord. this, a lot of right. Yeah, because of the mass cheating in video games and things like that. Like companies like Fortnite and things like that. When they ban you, there is no appeal. And there is nobody you can reach out to to appeal it. And they'll just basically say, sorry for your luck. Um, I don't know if Discord or things like that are running on the same instance at this point. Because it just seems like anytime you have a mass group of people anywhere, it's a case of we can't have nice things. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess it's... I think Discord has done somewhat of a good job of allowing moderators to have control over what types of things can be posted and who can post what and in what channels and all that stuff. So I think it's like, you know, to give people a maybe an action they can take, make sure that your Discord is restricted, you know, like maybe don't allow people to post attached images at all, right? Or or links or things like that. You can maybe restrict down what is allowed to be posted. Obviously, though, depending on, you know, if you have a channel called share your battle stations with us or whatever, then it's tough to like have a channel like that, but no way to post images. It's like then the channel is yeah. pointless and uh, it's a tough, right. you know, usability versus... Locking the thing down. that I like is whenever you join a Discord, if you get like a level based on like how much you've interacted, right? So if you've sent like 10 messages, then now you're allowed to post like an image. If you sent like 50 messages, now you're allowed basically like a normal user where you can send, you know, any type of message you want. And that seems yeah. to cut down on it. Yeah, you just have yeah. the, 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 the low level bots aren't going to be able to, to navigate those. I mean, yeah, you could have a compromised user that wants to talk and chat and maybe spend some money in order to try and drop a link to something that's malicious, but cuts down on stuff like that. Totally. Yeah. I think that's basically what you'd have to do is lock down your discord even more, make sure that it's both time-based account reputation based. And also just, yeah, like history of how much, you know, how many messages you've sent in the chat or, or that kind of thing. So all right, who wants to, I guess the last article, unless anyone has any uh, things they'd prefer to discuss, should be the war on flippers. Let's give oh, them up. The yeah. So uh, yeah. I don't know if you guys heard the update from the Canada war, but since you guys were gone last week, Canada actually oh. issued saying that only qualified professionals can have flippers. So are you a qualified professional? Definitely am not. Definitely not. But I still have. Okay, but is there any? How are they going to determine there... that though? Yeah, yeah. they How didn't state qualify? that. They're they're trying to figure that iron out. They're going to have a flipper plus that you go and take, and that that certification is going to allow you <laughs> to. Plus? Yeah, we... I already got F coming from in EC Council. The new flipper <laughs> plus certification. <laughs> oh, you get flipper plus certified now. I uh, you guys joke. You guys joke, but there are some uh, other companies that already have flipper classes out there. No, well, okay, flipper classes are legit. I have, I have seen a flipper class at like my local flipper class, though. But, no. but I'm saying a, a flip, a flipper plus to order to buy the flipper, like a certification. It's like getting your concealed weapons permit. It's like you, know, you have to okay, go take no gun classes. When Sands has a flipper class. 
Dude. Then I'll be impressed. Yeah, I will say it's not really honest. It's between glasses out, okay? and it's hurts. Done. Ralph, do you teach Flipper in your class? No, I do not <laughs> teach okay. Flipper in our, my class. I will say, if you if you do teach a wireless hacking course and you're not teaching Flipper, then you're probably doing it wrong because they're quite powerful <laughs> so devices. Did did we have the article for the uh, the the Flipper the student who got um, kicked out of yep. school? It is in uh, there. We can uh, pull yes. that. Ryan can pull it up. But so, yeah, there's this week the war on Flipper significantly advanced uh, into the United States. So. It's getting yeah, real. It's getting real. So the it's, wild part is they said that he was using the flipper to like disable the teacher's phone. I'm like, where the hell's that teacher? <laughs> I can, how do you do this? Like, where's the manual it's for It's probably this? the this, stupid Bluetooth I, thing. Yeah, I'm not going to. Oh, yeah, you're probably right. I was going to say, I, I got alleged of hacking the school's uh, cameras one time. Mm-hmm. And the I allegedly, I, I, allegedly, yeah, allegedly, allegedly, that is a key thing. Never confirmed. Never confirmed. <laughs> and I was also like the head of AV for our school. I I personally knew. I'm like, those are fake cameras, and you're telling me I hacked them. Like, who told you that? <laughs> like, and it was like some stoners who got caught doing things, and they just said, "Oh, Wade hacked the camera," and then it was it was pretty funny. Mm. But I didn't see this school flipper one. I was talking it's, about the uh, Australian yeah, I'll, one. I'll find but... Hold on, I gotta go dig for the link. It's it's a deep. You've, you've probably never it's heard a deep, of it. It's a deep, it's a deep link. If you, I, I saw is, this. It was high school. It was high yes, school. It was not it was in college. I saw this was he opening too. the doors? Wow. Uh, no. There was one he where was he was opening, opening the door. The door. Okay. Right. I found the, the article. It's he was on... like causing such a disturbance with the flipper that like even the students supposedly were okay. telling him to get out of the class because it was ruining the whole thing. Right. I posted, yeah, so I posted the link. Essentially, this is in Utah. Um, a teacher couldn't figure out why the electronics kept going out for a whole week straight. The classic electronics were not working for the first hour. This resulted in a high level of frustration. As you can imagine, it's probably the IR off button that you can, a generic off button. This is built into the flipper on the, in the default firmware. Um, their cell phone said that didn't work. Yeah, so essentially, it's just some kid being like, school's out. I'm canceling all the technology. Well, this is- this reminds me of when I was in high school and like a more advanced version of this when people would bring in like laser pointers and then everyone would or someone would shine the laser pointer on the like whiteboard where they were teaching and the teacher would always see it, but they wouldn't ever be able to figure out who was doing it. This is like a more advanced, like high, <laughs> like high tech yeah. version of that. I mean, I guess it's I, I mean, it's tough. I, I think it's one of those things of like the. <laughs> We all, I think everyone in this room probably has the story of how they got banned from computers in either high school or middle school or college. Mm. <laughs> I was never caught. Uh, I caught. was never caught. Allegedly. Okay, yes. okay Allegedly. fine. Allegedly. If you were never caught, that's that's a, another story. But yeah, either you <laughs> distributed games. That was my personal. I was the kid with the flash drives, right? Oh, so you need some, need some you, games you for around, study I hall. I got you. Him. I Guilty. got you. I, whatever it is, <laughs> you had like, like every study hall is a land party when I'm around. Oh, dude, um, that was the best. But yeah, so that was my story. I think everyone has. It's tough because, like, I mean, it's it's ironic that the teacher with the technical knowledge could just cover up the AR sensor on the on the you know TV or something. <laughs> like there are like funny workarounds for it. Like it'd be funny to be you know the. But it's unfair to assume all teachers have advanced technical knowledge. I mean, I can barely get my microphone and camera to work half the time, so I can only imagine doing it in front of a, a bunch of high schoolers. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's it's a tough thing. Tools will always be used for good and evil. It's just a fact. Yeah, I mean, it was like the, either the TV be gone or, like, you programmed a universal remote somehow, and if it's, you're doing pranks, then the cops get called. And now it's the whole yeah. like, the technical news article because... What? Like, if you go back like 10 years and somebody was using a TV be gone to disrupt classes, like, a, yeah, like, or a clapper, you just put the clapper on the plug of the TV. This is like an 80s, <laughs> oh, yeah. 80s attack. Oh, you, wow. You, you, yeah, you, those are like uh, the of the 80s. Like, yeah, that's like how long have a clapper has existed? Those should be banned in Canada and Australia, don't you think? <laughs> yeah. It's almost the same word as flipper, too. So it's bad. You have to be an authorized user. You have to be an advanced yeah, user. user. You can you only up- clap in the safety of your own home. You have to be certified for clapping now everywhere. I mean, they're, they're, they're going to they're going to ban balloons because somebody put like a whoopee cushion on a teacher's chair. They're just going to be like balloons. You have to be an authorized user. Well, hold on, because they <laughs> so wait before we get too ahead of ourselves. They did the right thing, right? Which is they just they just said you can't do this and got yeah. this, the kid got in trouble. They didn't ban flippers. Yeah, like it's nah. just it. Like in my opinion, if a kid is causing problems, you fix the kid, not the yeah. tool. 
Yeah. I agree with that. Well, that's a sensible 100%. thing to do, but... Yeah, and, I, and again, they didn't say flippers are now contraband and we're going to scan everyone's backpacks for flippers or something. We, we um, live in the age of overcorrection now, so that's yeah. impossible. Well, like, so what, what, I think, what I think is interesting about the flipper is they're taking it so much further than the capabilities of the flipper, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. They're like, oh, this thing's being used to steal cars left and right. Brand new ones, take it away. <laughs> yeah, this I mean, they're talking crazy. about like, using it illegally by those who wouldn't normally have access to a business like how are you breaking into businesses with a flipper go go to the go to the uh, australian throwing it through the window first of all no, I'm just kidding. go to the australian link pretty much they yeah, just the said australian they they found a flipper it. on someone that they arrested right oh but yeah, if you scroll like down if you scroll down there's an actual youtube video that guy looks like the ask a ninja guy, by the way. <laughs> but <laughs> ask a ninja to break into a car. And then he, they go into it That's about, and this guy does not mention a flipper whatsoever. He's They're actually flipper, using like, other methods. The, yeah. the thumbnail of it, it's like he's got like yes. a full-fledged laptop. And it's like, yeah. oh, well, this oh, I mean, obviously, I do right. love right. that right. they're yeah. now calling it just an international car theft tool. It's like, no, it's, <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> what, if, what if we're all wrong? What if we're all wrong and the flippers, the people who make flipper are actually jail baiting us right now right mm. putting all these articles everywhere <laughs> flipper sales are out the roof it's it's marketing i bet you campaign. like it's total it's marketing, marketing campaign. campaign dude i just it's sold like, my it's like for seven thousand dollars man it's exactly. like getting that email that's like <laughs> biden's gonna ban assault rifles or whatever and then everyone goes out Bi and buys assault Bi rifles. if you thing. say biden's gonna ban flippers there's gonna be a ten thousand flippers sold right now <laughs> yep, yep. All right, buy stock and flipper oh, oh my god i mean yeah it's flip just, it it's, yeah, it's fun how that the pendulum swings like the pendulum does, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. I'm gonna start offering flipper as a service. All I'm saying flipping is, I mean, I want is the no F longer the or... thing. It's flipping flippers. I, I, <laughs> I, I need. Yeah, there's no flipping burgers. It's just flipping flippers. Yeah, I mean, I think this is like, I don't know. I think it's an awareness thing of like, I, I can't wait until one of my friends asks me, "Do you have a flipper?" Are you F plus certified? No, no. <laughs> Although I will say, I, I I I hope that the people at Flipper, who, by the way, the tools and everything is so amazing, like and fun to use, like the games and all that, like even just the like little utility you use to flash the firmware is so cool. Like I love the fit and finish of all the Flipper stuff. They need to make like a license that you can print off with like your picture that says like I am a certified flipper uh, professional user or whatever. And it's got like a little picture of like a dolphin or something. I don't know. Uh, needs to happen. They're gonna make the, like, the flipper grips illegal. Like that's too. The new school for uh, the new school for using flippers. Flipper U or F. <laughs> yeah, that's a classic that every 10 years or so we get to find another way to pull it back yes <laughs> all right well uh, i guess this podcast is sponsored by black hills information security uh we know how to use flippers so hire us Woo. um wow. yeah we kill that it. shit with fire <laughs> bye bye <laughs> <laughs>